Scripture with the word and of God. Or not so, for I like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, most gracious God, it's in the mighty name of Jesus that we've assembled here this morning, Lord God. Thank you, you on behalf of your loving kindness and your tender mercy. That loving kindness means loving loyalty, Lord God, have you have given unto us throughout all of our years from generation unto generation. Lord God, we need your presence here today, Lord God, because we can do nothing without you. For you are the vine, we are the branches. Bless us this day, Lord God, if we gather together as one body in Christ. Glorify, magnify yourself in your house, Lord God, your house of prayer. Wherefore we have assembled and offer up praise and worship unto thee. We pray, Lord God, that thou will come into the minds and the hearts of those who have gathered today, Lord God. Let us remove that which we have, our circumstances, anything that hinders us, Lord God, from receiving from you. Let us be receptive to that which you was about to give unto us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I'm going to take this time and offer anyone who has a testimony that they might want to share. Amen. Anyone have something they might want to share, a testimony of the goodness of the Lord? Amen. Does anyone have a song on their heart? Hey, go ahead. Amen. Mm hmm Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Anyone else? Go ahead, sister. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Is there anyone else? Is there anyone else with a song on their heart? I will turn to page 27. We'll sing Blessed Assurance. Amen. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit. Washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my song. Raising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my side. Angels descending. Ring from above, echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest, I am my Savior. Am happy and blessed, watching and waiting, look. 
looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Amen, amen. I will offer up anyone else with another opportunity to give praise unto the Lord, a testimony, amen. Is there anyone else? Amen. 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 I, I want just to like to thank God for peace, tranquility. Uh, I can remember when I couldn't sit in one place for one minute. But I sat home for four straight days, didn't come out of the house, didn't do nothing. Because I knew God had supplied everything that I needed and kept me in the place where I needed to be. I just thank God for his love, his warmth, his comfort. And I thank you for all that he's done for me because I know in my heart that that's not all he's going to do. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? At this point in time in the service, we're going to turn it over to the pulpit. Amen. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow.
Please bow your heads in prayer. Lord, we come to you right now thanking you and praising you for allowing us to be in your house one more time, Lord. Thank you for allowing us to get past this week's trials and tribulations, Lord, and helping us through our times of need, Lord, so that we may be able to get back to this point to get in contact with our source, Lord. And right now, we all have our hearts open for you, Lord. We ask that you come in and, and enter our hearts so that we may be able to be attentive the way that we need to be attentive, Lord. Listen to the words that Reverend Bay is preaching and that we may be able to accept them, understand them, and then apply them to our lives, Lord, so that we may be able to continue to press toward the mark, Lord. And we just thank you so much for all your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us reaffirm my faith together by reciting the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Today's congregational hymn can be found on page 199, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. Once again, the congregational hymn can be found on page 199, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus.
Now we will have now we'll have a scripture reading by Reverend Bay, followed by a prayer by Benjamin Logan. Yet say ye, why doth not the Son bear the iniquity of the Father? When the Son have done that which is lawful and right, and have kept all my statutes and have done them, he shall surely live. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The Son shall not bear the iniquity of the Father, neither shall the Father bear the iniquity of the Son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. But if the wicked will turn from all his sins that he hath committed, and keep all my statutes, and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. All his transgressions that he hath committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him, in his righteousness that he have done, he shall live. Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, saith the Lord God, and not that he should return from his ways and live? But when the righteous turneth away from his righteousness, and committeth iniquity, and doeth according to all the abominations that the wicked man doeth, shall he live? All his righteousness that he have done shall not be mentioned in his trespass that he have trespassed, and in his sin that he have sinned. In them shall he die. Yet ye say, the way of the Lord is not equal. Hear now, O house of Israel, is not my way equal? Are not your ways unequal? When a righteous man turneth away from his righteousness, and committeth iniquity, and dieth in them, for his iniquity that he have done shall he die. Again, when the wicked man turneth away from his wickedness that he hath committed, and doeth that which is lawful and right, he shall save his soul alive, because he considereth and turneth away from all his transgressions that he hath committed. He shall surely live, he shall not die. Yet, saith the house of Israel, the way of the Lord is not equal. O house of Israel, are not my ways equal? Are not your ways unequal? Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, every one according to his ways, saith the Lord God. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. Cast away from you all your transgressions, whereby ye have transgressed, and make you a new heart and a new spirit. For why will ye die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth, saith the Lord God. Wherefore, turn yourselves and live ye. This is the word of the Lord. Everyone, please bow your heads. Dear Lord, I pray, I pray that um, everyone in this world can turn their hearts to you and repent to you. Let the, let the nation of Israel turn their hearts to you, the body of Christ, and... Um, And, uh, and uh, please bless uh, Miss, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Bay and the whole church family and all the, the children and the senior citizens and all the grandparents. Amen.
now we will have a selection by the Sounds of Youth Choir. by your heads in prayer. Lord, we come to you again thanking you for allowing us to have this opportunity to give back to others, Lord. We thank you for our circumstances, Lord, that we may be able to give to these other people, Lord, in their time of need, Lord. Thank you for blessing us so that we may be able to bless others. And we pray that you, you help us to give with a, with a willing heart, Lord, not with the heart of bitter, not with the heart of, of routine. We just thank you for this opportunity and we take full advantage of it, Lord, by trying to to give back to others, Lord. And we pray all these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
all things come of thee. We'll take this time to recognize any visitors with us today. Please state your name and a little something about yourself. Huh? Amen, amen. Could you repeat that, please? Just a tad louder. Well, thank you for coming to worship with us today. And on, on behalf of Reverend Bay and Mrs. Bay, we welcome you to come worship with us whenever you're in the area. And now we'll have announcements by Sister Cookie Brown. Good morning. These are the announcements for the week. The seasonal tea will be August 23rd, which is next Sunday. It'll be at 2 o'clock here at the church for our shining star, Sister Aurelis Timberlake. Um, Please don't forget, people have signed up for things for the tea. Please remember to bring them um, so they'll be here on time so that we can get set up and get going as we need to. And we appreciate your efforts on that behalf. On September 12th at 4 p.m., there will be a dinner theater at Camp Cedar Knowles featuring dinner and a play for $25. Children 6 to 12, the tickets are 10. Please see Sister Diane Jones for tickets. Thank you for your sympathy. Pastor Bay, members and friends, your kind expression of sympathy will always be remembered with deepest gratitude. Sister Catherine Mansfield and family. We'd like to remind you Reverend Bay's birthday is coming up soon. Um, don't forget him. Um, you have two Sundays and I'm sure he'll accept whatever kindnesses you have for him at any point within the two weeks or beyond. So God bless you and your generosity. And any other announcements will come from a pulpit associate. Thank you. We'll now have another selection by the Sounds of Youth Choir. Oh. Sorry. Has anybody had a birthday or anniversary in the past week? <laughs> Selection by the sounds of youth choirs. I did visit.
the devil, we can tell him I this. Don't Oh my.
We're still in the AM, uh, but we thank God for it. And didn't the children do a wonderful job? Sylvia and Tyrone, you're doing a good job. And uh, we encourage your prayers uh, on their behalf. That, uh, amen. Amen. That uh, the Lord will continue to uh, grow them and develop them. And uh, I can very easily see them giving adult service. Amen. See, adult service right here in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. May it be so. We are in the 18th chapter of the prophecy of Ezekiel today. And in it, there is recorded a poetical protest, a um, popular saying, a saying that was popular in 7th century Israel, which had to do with their understanding that they were being punished disproportionately by the Lord who had allowed their enemies to overcome them. Some had been carried away into Babylon where they received even harsher treatment than those who remained in the land. And all of their previous understanding about God being a just God and about God being a, a do-right God um, faded, became somewhat weak because, because they felt that the punishment should have fallen on others other than themselves. I suppose they reasoned in their minds, uh, in their heart, uh, that uh, I'm no worse, I may not be any better, but I'm no worse than so-and-so. And how is it that they escaped judgment and God has punished us disproportionately for our sins? Uh, as I thought about uh, this word and enter, enter into it uh, for preaching purposes, um, I just happened to be passing through the living room and the television set was on mm -hmm. and uh, It appeared I was just in time to catch a syndicated broadcast of the Western gun smoke. You know, I think our eyes and our ears are attuned sometimes to certain things. And when I heard that theme music, uh, amen. It was gun smoke. Amen. To cut straight through, uh, it opened on uh, the scene of a robbery that had taken place on a dangerous stretch of road outside of town, outside of Dodge. And apparently, a stagecoach robbery had just taken place. And it left uh, in the wake, in the aftermath of 
that uh, event, it left, uh, I believe, uh, one of the riot, one of the guards did. It left uh, one of the passengers She well, she went into sudden labor. She was pregnant. She went into sudden labor at the excitement uh, and perhaps even the bumpy ride of the stagecoach, but <laughs> contributed to uh, a premature birth. Now, uh, an additional passenger who was on there or was was the one who actually robbed the stage. And, uh, and the woman who went into premature labor, it would turn out that she was his wife, her partner. Now, now, now um, look, she, um, uh, they took her into town and Doc Adams, after, you know, they got him calmed down a little, um, he did what doctors are supposed to do, and he um, delivered one of the babies. One of them. Uh, and it turns out over the space of a couple of days, she had two more. Two more babies, so that she had triplets. They were timed in such a way. And... To further complicate matters, after the third one was born, she died. She died from the shock uh, uh, of what had happened. She, she died. So that left the woman dead and three newborns, three newborn babies to be taken care of. Doc and did the best he could, you know, and, uh, exi highly excitable, and Festus was even more excited than he. Uh, they, and they all began to be concerned about what now is to become, uh, who's going to take care of these children. Well, uh, the situation was, a day was set when a circuit judge or judge could, would come and make a determination about the future of these children, where they were going to go. Dispute broke out among the townspeople as some of them uh, in, insisted that, um, uh, that none of them were going to be responsible for taking care of these, this, these children that were the offspring of a bank robber. Uh, None of, none of them were going to be responsible for taking them in. And uh, one of the arguments mounted was bad blood. Bad blood. The, the, these, these children have bad blood running through their veins. And, and no one is going to adopt them because uh, sooner or later the, 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 the sins of the father will come back on the young people, on the, on the babies, and they will grow up to be like their, uh, like their daddy. It, it raised the question as to whether or not, um, whether or not um, personality is formed by, uh, by genetics, thank you, or by DNA. Uh, are they, uh, are they, will they be bank robbers? Will they be outlaws and lawless because of the DNA which they carry in their veins? Uh, or will it be the circumstances that surround them and the people with whom they come into contact? Will it be heredity? Will they inherit the disposition and the attitude and the personality traits of their father, or 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 will they be, or will that be modified by the influences 
uh, of those around them. It's interesting. And so, it, so the case went to court, and they argued and they fought, uh, and the judge finally conceded a little and said, well, if you could find somebody, uh, if you could find somebody responsible that we could put them, in, but, 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 but recognize we'd have to split them up. Now, we couldn't put them all three. No, no, nobody's going to adopt all three at the same time. Uh, we probably have, will have to split them up. But if, if a home could be found that would take them, well and good, then uh, I will go on my way and consider the matter settled. But where do you find somebody who's willing to take in uh, as their own? Uh, someone who, uh, whose background uh, you don't know anything about. Uh, who, who, um, who, who could turn out, who could turn out to be a lot of trouble uh, that you will be uh, having, have to deal with uh, for their maturing years, up to the time of their maturing years. What, and and uh, who, who wants to take that risk? Surprisingly enough, the one who said uh, at, at the crucial moment, uh, when, in, when, in, when it was about to be lost, stepped forward and said, I'll take them. I, I take them. I wanted them from the time that, you first, that they were first born. I, and now the thing about it was, the irony of it was, was this woman, this woman already had ten children. Ten children of her own. Uh, and yet, Miss Kit, no, no, that was the, the farmer's wife who lived outside of town. Uh, the one who had delivered two of the babies uh, and, um, and, and was taking care of them. She, already, she said, I'll gladly take them. I'll gladly take them. And so, uh, and so she took them into her home and we are left with the hopes that they lived happily ever after. Amen. But Miss Kitty, the final, final conversation of the, of the thing, uh, Miss Kitty, uh, Doc, or Festus, one of them, asked the question, uh, how could she do that? Why, why, why would she do that? Why would she take in more children? She's already got ten. Why would she do that? And Miss Kitty, bless her heart, <laughs> Uh, thoughtfully said, I guess when you really love children, there's always room for one more. Uh, that's, that's somebody who's willing to bypass all the unforeseeables. Uh, the unforeseeables and the unforeseen. And uh, who are willing to take the risk because, because of who she is, because she's a person who loves. Uh, amen. Uh, I, I, I saw that from the connect, from the standpoint of God's way with us. Uh, amen. We who are perhaps, who have inherited, if not from our immediate mothers and fathers, we who have inherited a sin nature and a rebellious nature. We who, have, uh, who, who bring with us to the relationship with God all kinds of baggage. Uh, 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 who, who, who by nature, by nature uh, seems to want to give him a lot of grief. Who want to question him? Who want to replace him in in power? Uh, who 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 want to uh, dethrone God, if you please? Society as a whole have tried to shut him out. Uh, not only shut him out of our personal lives, but shut him out of our political and social life. They're taking him out of the court, kicked him out of the courtroom, taking him out of the schools. Uh, and, 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 and Christians have taken him out of the church. Uh, 
So, so it, it's, a big, it's a big move on God's part to, to reach out to us and to accept us. But he does so because he knows uh, and because he loves. And because he loves, there's always room for one more. Uh, they tell me that at the beginning of creation that uh, when the Lord contemplated making mankind and investing him with free will, uh, his advisors in heaven, uh, in the heavenly council, said, if you make man, he'll break your heart. Uh, if you break man, if you make man, uh, he will give you nothing but grief. If you give him free will, he will use that free will uh, to, to uh, use it against you. Uh, uh, if, you if you don't think so, uh, I got a witness named Job. Uh, 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 Job is, is serving you right now and f pretending a love for you right now because you are uh, uh, you, you've invested him with a, with a whole lot of good things and you've given him uh, a, a large family and you've given him many possessions uh, uh, and, and you've given him things but if you take it away and uh, he will cur curse you to your face. God said, take your best shot. And, and, and see, Satan teed off on Job. Knocked him and laid, knocked him down experientially and laid him out prostate. Uh, in ash sackcloth and ashes. Uh, and then reported back, then reported back to God. And said, uh, uh, there it is. Uh, do you, does, it, does he still maintain his integrity? Uh, uh, wife got into the act. Said, I'm sick of this. Why don't you, I, I can't stand to see you suffer like that. Why don't you just curse God and die? Woman, you, you speak like one of the foolish ones. Should we receive good at the hand of God and not evil also? The Lord gave. The Lord have taken away. Blessed be the of the God of Jacob and he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his paths. Michael 4-2. Hello and once again it's temple time. The worship broadcast from the Union Baptist Temple of Atlantic City, New Jersey calling us from the world of care and telling the nations that the Savior is come. This is your host Shaw Marie Hinton inviting you to another life-changing encounter with the Word of God under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We teach Jesus of Nazareth as Savior and Lord, faith in his finished work on Calvary as the way of salvation, love as the law of his kingdom, and his coming again as the blessed hope of the believer. Do stay with us and pray with us as the mass choir ministers, Jesus is a rock in a weary land. And Pastor Ah. What, what makes him do that? The, the answer comes back uh, through this text that um, because we obey his laws. Because we obey his laws, keep his commandments and his statutes. There are some who take that route to trying and satisfy you know, it seems that human pride is such. Human pride is such that uh, it wants to be equal with God. It wants, uh, if it could, to dethrone God. Uh, it wants to take God's place. 
Uh, there, there, there's something about human nature, pride, I suppose, that will not allow us to come to God as beggars. Uh, that, 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 that will not allow us to acknowledge that God is greater than ourselves. Just hard to accept that. And thus also hard to accept God's way that leads to life and salvation. Hard for us to accept God's way of doing it. Uh, we, we, we find, we, we mount a resistance. We, we, we mount a resistance to doing it God's way. Jesus was teaching uh, in Judea uh, and uh, he said, except the Son of Man... Uh, be, be lifted up and you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood. And he was talking about appropriating to ourselves his, his, his crucified body uh, and his shed blood. Uh, but, 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 but when some of them heard that, they turned around and walked away. They walked away. Uh, now, now Jesus put it before them as God's way of providing salvation, but... Uh, no, because it didn't involve human effort. Uh, because it was not a human endorsed way. Because it did not square with their understanding about how it ought to be. They turned and walked away. And Jesus said to the ones that remain, will you also go away? Ah, thanks be to God that he endowed them with enough understanding. With enough wisdom that there wasn't any other choice to go to. To whom shall we go? Uh, if there's another way, how shall we take it? That, uh, 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 that will end up in the presence of God. There's no other way. There is no other way. To whom shall we go? Thou alone hast the words of eternal life. Uh, so... Uh, and so this, this text uh, contemplates human protest, human protest against, uh, against what God has done. By the way, he reminds them in verse 4 that he owns. Amen. Uh, this is my house. Uh, you might not respect me. <laughs> Come on now. Uh, yeah, in your little arena, in your little world. Uh, but this is my house. I'm the owner of all souls. I own your father's soul. I own your mother's soul. And I own your soul. The soul, all souls are mine, saith the Lord. And I have determined... That the soul that sinned. Now you might not like it. You you might you might mount some resistance against it, but uh, 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 the soul that sinned, it shall die. And and what it is for you is to make the decision to choose life in the way that I have laid out for you. There's there's only one way. Uh, and, and it ain't by your works. It's not by your good works. You can't work good enough. Uh, you cannot accrue to yourself enough righteous deeds. So that when the line of judgment is plumbed, it will fall to your favor. Not so. Not so. Paul said uh, in Ro Romans chapter 10, he said, uh, Brethren, my heart's desire. And prayer to God for Israel is that she might be saved. For I bear them witness that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they, being ignorant of the righteousness of God, and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves Unto the righteousness of God. God is saying to those complainers in Babylon, when you submit yourself to the will of God, 
uh, th then you get out of the way and God can go ahead and do salvation like nobody else can do it but him. I bear them zeal. They got a right. They, 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 they got a, they, they, they doing what they think is right. They've got a zeal for it. But not according to knowledge. According to knowledge, the only way to be righteous is, is through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, because because uh, he is the only way. He's the only way. His way is the only way that leads to life. Amen. So the end of the the end of this passage uh, ends with a promise of new life. Of new life that God will break the imprisonment imposed upon us by the sins that we have committed to this point. Amen. Amen. Uh, Israel, Israel is paying the price, was paying the price in Babylon for the unheeded word of God. That's, that was their collective sin debt, their collective sin debt as a people. As, uh, but then here at the end, it's an individual. Each individual has to make the choice of God for himself and to do it. And to do it in the full knowledge and understanding of all of those sins that you have committed to this point. Uh, I think the answer becomes clear when you recognize that the load is just too much for you to bear. Uh, it, it, it's too much to bring before uh, God as an evidence of your righteousness. Uh, no. No. All you can do is cast your burden upon him, for he careth for you. Because uh, he is one who truly loves, Amen. truly loves. And because he truly loves, there's always room. Always room for one more. There's, there's room at the cross. For you, though millions have come, still there's room for one. Hallelujah. 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 Tell your friends that it's still not too late. Tell them it's still not too late. Tell them they have time now to receive salvation. Tell, tell them that uh, they needn't worry about uh, fancy speeches or trying to uh, use a whole bunch of fancy religious language. They don't need that. All they have to do is say, Lord, I yield. Peter got it down to a science when he said oh, there on the waters as he was sinking, Lord, save me. The thief on the cross said, Remember me when you come into paradise. Until you draw your last breath in this world. There's still time to get it right. There's still time to say yes to Christ and his claim on your life. There's still time. Yes. If nobody else wants you, God wants you. Amen. He wants to adopt you. Yeah, yeah, he wants to adopt you as his own. He wants to give you eternal life. He wants to give you a new chance and open up a new chance for you. Open up a new and living way and put a new and living heart into your life. He wants to save you. He wants to save you. How about you? What is your mindset? How do you feel about it? If you're not satisfied with your relationship with God, if you're not satisfied, I want to appeal to you to come forward. Yeah. Just step forward and indicate 
that you would like, if you've never done so, to take Christ as your Savior, to become a member of his body, which is the church. He's waiting with open arms to receive you, if you will say yes to him. Choir is going to lead us in a hymn, and as we come... Please stand. Oh. All right. <laughs> Bow your heads in prayer. Lord, we come to you right now thanking you and praising you for allowing us to hear that wonderful word, Lord. Thanking you for allowing us to have our hearts open and our ears open as well, Lord, so that we, may, we let you into our hearts, Lord. We let your words into our ears, Lord. And we just pray that right now you help us to to give back to you, Lord. Help us to keep up the, y your house, Lord. Give this money so that we may be able to come here after weeks of trials and tribulations and problems and things like that, Lord. And we just pray that you, you continue to give us what we need to have this house, Lord. Have your house, Lord, and have you. And we pray all these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen.
bless thou the gifts. 